is the riots on Radio U. So somebody was asking me, hey, how do you act, do you actually get to play Madden on Facebook? Just so you know, no, that's not it. You click play and it runs like a simulation. Mm-hmm. It'll tell you tell you what the big like plays were for that game, but it's not actually like, hey, I'm gonna plug in a controller to my computer. No, they want you to buy the game for and that. Then, <laughs> you know, I'll be able to play Madden on Facebook and it's gonna be sweet. Yeah. This, this is not so much. It sounds like a great idea. This is a light version. <laughs> but in the end, that's not what really happened. And let's face it, Nikki, the world is full of things that sound like great ideas. For example, let's imagine you live in the UK. Great idea, Sounds right? Sounds like you, a good idea. You, Lovely. You like the Beeb? You can watch it anytime you want. Get your color TV license and watch away. So then let's say you live at home. You're watching the Beeb. You get up to use the uh, oh, the loo. The loo. And uh, when you're in the loo, ah! You see a spider. Eric! So Eric comes in, and he wants to kill the spider. And it's like, okay, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. No. Oh. And it snuck, like, behind the loo, between, like, the loo and the wall. And so he's like, what can I do? What can I do? I got some spider spray. No, I got some hairspray. <laughs> no, it's still alive. <gasps> Although a hairspray will work. It'll freeze it for a little bit. <laughs> I know what to do. Hey, honey, sugar bumpkins, whatever he calls you. Um <laughs> Go get me a lighter. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I can see where that one's going. You can see. But it's a good idea. Like, it's a great idea. You're really getting somewhere. But what you it, it happens is he guy grabs the lighter. And it's full of the hairspray. Yeah. Um, but the problem is that when he does that, it goes up into the can and the can explodes. So now he's got burns on his face and his hands. And, um, and the, still a spider. Yeah, well, that's the <laughs> thing is, it. they don't know if the spider made it out or not. Well, I thought that this would have gone the way where he would have lit the spider on fire. The spider's on enough fire and he runs around and then he lights everything else on fire. Yeah. I, okay. I thought about that. Yeah. Too. Like that. I could see that totally happening. No, but that's not what happened. He ended up with, gosh, what, like severe burns. We're not saying how bad. And, but uh, probably really bad. Yeah. It's, it, it's not good. And so again, you know, at the time, you can see leading up to it the series of decisions where you're just like ah it's no big deal could be a big deal so again uh <laughs> it's funny because you know like here's the thing is like you know his wife was like oh don't do that and he's like whatever <laughs> this will be just fine no this problem this is no big deal this will take care of it i told you so situation dude can you imagine how loud it must have been when that can exploded <laughs> and then after when he's done screaming and he's got the bandages on she just leans over and is like Honey, are you feeling okay? It still hurts. Yeah. Uh, can you hear? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, good. I want you to listen really closely. I told you so. I told you this would happen. The next time I say something, you listen. Okay. <laughs> I could see that happening for sure. Absolutely. Using advanced technology, we've digitized and transcoded Obadiah and Nikki into a purely digital format. This is the Worst of the Riot podcast. It is the Riot, 8772-RADIO-U, online at RadioU.com. Now, come on. What? That sounds a little down. You're looking for some more... <laughs> Pep to it? <laughs> um, well, okay. Okay, Nikki, how about this one? How about this one, all right? Would you rather get shot by a gun or a bow and arrow? Um, well, that's interesting. It's a tough one, huh? I think I could live with a bow and arrow wound. I'm always afraid of gunshots, so I'd go bow and arrow. See, my thing is, like, with a gunshot, you could hope for a through and through. With a bow, you're probably going to have to pull it out. (gasps) Never mind. Yeah, you're right. I'd like a flesh wound. Yeah. Well, even a flesh (laughs) wound, it's got to come out. Yeah, but okay, if you get shot, though, and if it doesn't go all the way through, then you got to pull the bullet out. That's true. I've seen that on movies. It looks painful. And yeah, I'm sure but it's just like it is in the movies. For an arrow, of course, they're going to just chop off the top part of it and then just grab a hold of it. Just pull it through. Just pull it out and you live. Yeah, I'm sure it feels great. No big deal. Why wouldn't you want to just get it? <laughs> Sounds like a plan. But actually, I'm going to go with an option that we didn't present, but we also didn't take off the table. And that's going to be C, 
Neither. <laughs> and, and for and those not of you, in all of the above. <laughs> and the, for those of you that shows all of the above, what is your problem? <laughs> you might not live with that. <laughs> uh, but whatever. Uh, a place outside of uh, Cincinnati, dude, got uh, this is crazy. A guy in his neighborhood, and again, there's a, words like alleged need thrown around here. So yeah. um, there's a man in his neighborhood who is fairly well known for like if you need a place to stay or something's wrong, like he'll bring you in. Well, he had a friend of his who had was homeless, like he had lost his place to live, and so he'd said, you can stay with us for a couple of days. Well, apparently Captain Homeless got kind of mouthy with this guy's daughter, who's 11 years old, and the guy was like, get out, just get out, get out of here, whatever. And so the guy left, and he came back and shot him a couple times with a bow and arrow. <gasps> Captain Homeless did? Captain Homeless. Shot the nice guy? Shot the nice guy with the bow a and arrow. A couple of times? Three times. He had to reload? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, <laughs> here's this guy like, one, two, <laughs> two three. three. Does that mean he had, what, a quiver of well, arrows? Yeah, and the other thing I'm wondering is, like, you're homeless. Where's your bow and arrow stash? And why didn't you go hunt down something for the family to eat or something? All Maybe right? like, he was a hunter and he still had his stuff from his house. His stuff stashed somewhere. What the heck? And you don't go shooting the guy that was nice to you and let you in his house just because yeah. you got mouthy. Yeah, don't be mouthy. Do you don't like? How about an attitude of and gratitude? Who gets mouthy with an eleven year old girl? Yeah, well, eleven year old girls could probably be pretty mouthy. I know, but like if you're a twelve year old boy, that's fine. Be mouthy back, but you're an adult. Yeah. Uh uh-uh, uh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll <laughs> like, show you. What are you, you gonna do? And like, quit talking to her like that. <laughs> well, I'll show everybody. I'm getting my arrow. Yeah. That. But yeah. he lived, right? Yeah. Well, yes, he's alive. But when he got there, he had two arrows sticking out Aww. of him. Can you, like, as a first responder, it's like, um, yeah, you don't see a lot of arrow attacks. Is that an arrow? Did I see? It? Like, that's crazy, dude. It's crazy. What's wrong with people? What's wrong with you people? Come on. Um, again, I'm going to opt for none of the above. And just for the record, this is why people don't like to have other people over to spend the night. Mm -hmm, All right. mm -hmm. This is why once you get past the age of what, 12 to 18, all of a sudden the idea of saying, Hey, why don't you guys can just come stay at our place? People are like, "Um." no, not nowadays. Cause remember squatters rights, they can come try to take your house. Don't Actually, let anyone in. If you want to know the truth, that uh, that happened to some friends of mine. Yeah, it took them six months to get the guy that they were being nice to, uh, that they were they were helping him because he needed some help. It took six months and a lot of time in court to get him out of their house. So yeah. think of that next time. You're like, well, sure, come on over. I mean, I, I guess it's better than a bow and arrow. No, though, right? spend, a, what, 30 bucks, get a motel, stick him in there and have at it. <laughs> have a good time. I gave during the last fundraiser, and all I got was this crappy morning show. This is The Riot on listener-supported Radio U. We mentioned last week on The Riot that Civilization V, it's a strategy game, comes out for the PC. It's only a PC game. Now, you can play Civilization Revolution on your 360, your PS3, your iPod, your iPad, uh, your DS. I mean, like the list goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> it's almost everything. But the main Civilization series stays on the PC. And it's well known for being a game where if you ever sit down and play it, you will lose yourself in the game. I can think of two instances in particular playing Civilization 3 in which I started at about 10 o'clock, said to myself, man, it's got to be going for one. I have to go to bed. And I literally got up and it was 3.45 It was three hours later than I thought it was. You just get sucked in. You can't help yourself. What did you say uh, how people just think they'll take one more? One more turn. One more turn. Is that what they say? That's what people say. And if you ever play it, you'll find out. And you think that's not possible. No, no, no. You don't understand. Perfectly normal people get sucked in (laughs) to this. All right. It happens. I've seen it happen. But what do you do when you take somebody who already has a problem? like Nick, and then you introduce a game like Civ Five to them. He went to his sister's wedding over the weekend. Nick, family wedding, how many hours did you log over the weekend? 17. 
Nick. That is almost an entire day. Nick, Nick that's bad. <laughs> were, like, were you like there with the wedding party? Did you have a laptop during the wedding or what? It was charging during the wedding. Oh, my gosh. Dude. You're like, no, I'll be the DJ for the wedding. And while the music's playing, you're playing it. Well, I, did th- I do think that it has very nice music. No, that's good. You can I dance to it. it. And it changes depending on what you know time period so you're wait, in. Nick, have you played a lot of Civ? I have. Okay, I've, so I've played I mean, every Civ game since Civilization 2. So did we know that this was an issue with him, or is this now I, just coming out? Well, okay, I did know. I know it's know. an issue with everybody. Now, 2K Games gave us two copies of Civ 5, um, one for me and one for Nick. And mine has seen less than an hour. You know, play. my birthday, et cetera, et cetera. And I felt like maybe I should hold the download code from Nick until he got back from the wedding because I didn't know. <laughs> I still don't know if he's ready. But it sounds like maybe, I don't know if I made the right decision or the wrong decision, Nick. Did you spend any time with your family at all? I did. Uh, I just had some carefully selected moments of downtime. Hours of downtime. Hours of downtime. <laughs> now, 17 hours well, of downtime. And part of it, too, was that we were in the different time zone. So so what, does that give you more hours? Because I didn't think that's how that works. Three more hours. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. Your, your body's not magically three hours extra. Well, you know? it, think about this, though. Let's break it down, okay? The flight out there was four hours. The flight back was four hours. Did you play on the flight? I did. Most of the, well, pretty much the entire flight, both ways. <laughs> the people around so. are like, what is this guy's issue? <laughs> this guy has a problem. The stewardess is like, well, we're having to circle the airport because someone <laughs> won't shut off their laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Sir! <laughs> and it seems. One more turn. One, one more turn. Oh, one more turn. <laughs> I can't get, I can't save it. Almost got this uh, <laughs> hanging gardens built. Just keep circling. Oh my gosh. Well, good for you. Yeah. Nick. What is it? Good for Is you. It? Like, I feel like I may have... What are have... we going to do? Have well, an intervention? Well, what are no, we going to do with them? But here's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned that Sarah, Nick's significant other, I'm going to start getting phone calls and death threats. You. You did this. <laughs> you gave him the code that ruined my life. <laughs> and I know he'll be like, well, I'm just, you know, playing it enough to review it. You are this... reviewing the game, right? Uh, yeah, I'll be reviewing it for months to come. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nick, Nick will give us our official take. During riot control tomorrow. Now you're taking it back from him, though, once the review's done. I don't even think that's possible. You see, we, it's a steam code, which means it's forever tied forever, to your Forever, yeah, right. <laughs> you can never be free of it. Well, Nick, um, just notice that, that that's a warning. Yeah. It's a warning. And yeah. you know, the thing with steam is you can install that on any computer. Oh, my God. I'm already aware. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't think we're not watching you, and you there. can save your game to the Steam Cloud, so that way you can just open it wherever you are. Yeah, this is all good for Nick. Like these are good things. Like I, <laughs> what I feel is happening here is Nick is really uh, he's establishing for us himself some good life habits, the kind of stuff that years down the line will still be paying dividends. You know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> worried, worried, worried. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm sure Nick's probably going to tell us how much he hates it during riot control tomorrow. So Nick, here's here's what I think should be your goal, all right? You still have until tomorrow before Riot Girl Control. Let's see if you can log a full day's worth of play in less than a week. Oof. Oh, in less than a week. Hmm. Right. That I means- would need to do it by Friday. Well, no, 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 no. Here's the thing, though. I'm talking about for the review tomorrow. Like, did you oh. play last night? I, uh, uh, only for like an hour. <laughs> what? So what? So what? Are you up to like 18 now, right? <laughs> Um, I think I'm at 17 and a half. All right. Well, that is only six and a half hours that you need to play between today. Now. Yeah. Now, listen, listen, <laughs> oh my gosh. Take, listen. The, take the afternoon off. Just go. <laughs> is it, is it important to you or not? Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess. Then you said your answer I, right I there. can do it with it. Like I got the game last Friday. So if I do it by this Friday, that would be a week. So what are you saying? Three hours tonight, three, three and a half hours, hours tomorrow night. Yeah. All right. Well, you should pay yourself. Is that yourself. fair? That's, that seems good. You know, <laughs> don't go on a binge or anything. In case you're wondering, yes, we do get complaints. They have gone too far. This time, they are going to be held accountable. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. You do what you want to do. But I have a bit of a standing policy, and it's as follows. If your rides are taken down, 
and then reassembled and taken down and reassembled and taken down and reassembled and taken down and reassembled. I'm probably not going to ride your rides. And I'm going to tell you why. You know, just a few minutes ago, we were talking about young officer Aaron Yen of that Massachusetts Police Department and how he was doing as little as possible just to get by. Making, yeah. Okay. All right. Now, let's say that that's just, you know... Everybody, I, I say that everyone does that now and again. Like, that's not what you want to do. That's not how you want to live your life. But everybody has a day where they've just gotten by. They haven't performed. They would not be rewarded for their behavior, but they did just enough to get in and get out. Might have even missed a couple things, but they'll take care of it tomorrow, right? Now. Let's say that your job is the taking down and reassembling of, I don't know, a carnival ride, right? And you have one of those days, <laughs> maybe a couple of those days in a row. And there are some screws here that never quite got tightened down. Yeah. A couple of wrench turns that not quite tight enough. And maybe that snowballs. Yeah, and over time, well, you know, whatever. I think kids' rides are kind of okay, you know, because, I mean, let's face it, what do they do? Turn around? Six inches off the ground. All right. It's cool. But, you know, as someone that is over the age of five and they want me to go in the thing that spins me around to like 45 miles an hour, upside this, upside whatever, it's like, uh, you know, I'm good. I'm good. And some people say, oh, you're just being a wimp. You're overthinking it. Yeah. Yeah, I am. But as I was watching it, I just thought, man, just a couple of wrench turns away from me being planted on some, ah, I'm out. Like, I'm good. Like, if that's the same ride that I rode in that parking lot of the Piggly Wiggly last weekend, and now it's over here, and then it's over there, it's like, ah. Is this stemming from the festival you were at yesterday and you saw rides? I, is it? Maybe. I'm not here to name names <laughs> right, or point I'm fingers. I'm just asking. I'm just telling you, yesterday I introduced Sam to Obadiah's ride policy, and that is, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just going to. I'm just going to eat some more bourbon chicken. Like, I'll just, this will be my ride. This right here, this is the ride. Um, <laughs> will this food be good or not? Whee! It's now, the biggest ride. Now, you know, and I'm sure someone will argue, hey, those are state inspected. And oh, and no, I'm like, no, I'm going to go yeah. to Cedar Point this weekend. And like, you're going to get on something that's going to take you 300 feet high and drop you at 70 miles an hour. It's like, yeah, but that doesn't have any wheels on it. Like, they don't take it apart like it stays there. You know, I feel more comfortable that way. But then again, maybe the argument would be right, which means they never inspected, so you never know, and blah, 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 blah. I don't know what the right answer is. I only know that as I was watching something fly around yesterday, I said to Sam, dude, couldn't you just see one of those cars just going like, Phew! <laughs> and like for five seconds, it's the best ride you've ever been on. And then the ride comes to a, a sudden stop. Yeah. Dang it. The riot is to your ears what all those energy drinks are to your liver. For the love of God, please stop. I can only process so much. Oh. The riot. Radio U. So I went to Cedar Point over the weekend, Sandusky, Ohio. For those of you who don't know what it is, it is one of the most celebrated amusement parks in the world. Or so says the sign going in. Well, that's what I that's what they said. <laughs> no, it, it, it's a great place. Um, and so we were there on Saturday, and I encountered someone that was not me at all. And I was like, you know what? I would probably hire that person, but I could never be this person. There's this lady working one of the rides that I mean, like, dude, I don't know if, I don't know how long it's been since I've encountered someone that was such an unbelievable, unbelievable stickler for the rules. Yeah. It was like. If you were, you know, less than a half a centimeter over the line, excuse me, you're on the line, go to the line, blah, blah, blah. if you were like anything you were doing, I mean, I, just an absolute stickler of the rules. And that's when I realized that I wouldn't be allowed to have that kind of job. Cause here's the thing, like if you were going to hire me and you said, here are the rules, I would be like, okay, those are the rules, but you know how rules are. They bend a little bit. Oh, we, can flexible. All, we can all be reasonable people here. And this was the kind of person that I like, dude, 
no, no, like no room for reason. She's the kind of person that if you worked for her, you would end up just like, I hate my job and I ate everything because yeah, but if you ever once in a while meet those people, they're the ones that their their life is not in order. But you think job, so? Yeah, you like you go back it? to their house and they're hoarders or something. Maybe. I don't know. But I was like, I was amazed because it was just that flash of insight moment where I'm like, oh my gosh, like if these are the kind of people they want to hire to do jobs, I could never get a job like this. Because I'd be like... You're too nice. I, I'd be like, ah, his foot's a little over the line. So what? Who drew the line? We did. Who's free to re- redraw the line? We are. All right? Community standards. Well, Let's work together you here. You don't have to be nasty about it, but people get nasty. And so, like, for the, like the other thing I had was, like, it was time to get on the ride, and they had just emptied out the last car. And this is like... Like, oh, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, and then like once the last person who, by the way, was about half a foot away from closing the exit gate or whatever, once the exit gate was closed and I'm literally talking about eight seconds later, she's like, okay, now all right, in, okay. Yeah. And I thought, dude, it's like that uh, person at Purple Door. The yes. sound person? Oh. The, the person down front. Yeah, we had at Purple Door, which is a music festival, this guy was doing for one of the stages. He's basically kind of telling the bands like... How much time they had left. How much time you have left. Now, this is not a hard job. It's, this is normally a box a that to tells you. Job. There's not a lot to it. You can't really screw this up. But he kept... Uh, it was his way that he did it. He yeah. kept screaming, yelling, holding the sign up, doing this, pointing, doing all this crazy stuff. And the bands, half of them are like, what's, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> Why are you making this Why so are you hard being this way dude and so i just walked away like you know what i i felt like i i gathered insight into myself yeah and which is to say that uh i am the kind of person who's just like that's ah, not a big deal let's just let it go but then there are my mirror opposites out there that are like no it's all a big deal <laughs> the rules are what keep us from becoming savages like the animals in the wild this is society do not cross that line if you're a little bit across you're still across and i'll tell you what not on this ride not in this amusement park not now not ever so i mean that's the kind of job i'm not going to be able to have i would love to see you go up to the person and be like it's okay you know, you it's wonder, all right. You understand. <laughs> and they start crying. That in the employee break room, they are now serving decaf. It's got an orange top. Okay. Just start pouring from there. Or as you say, Nikki, like, listen, hey, hey, look at me. Look no at my eyes. You. No, no, stop. Look at my eyes. <laughs> and then they just look at me and I don't even say anything and they just yeah, break down. They're like, no, no, no. Come back. Just I, stare. I'm over the line and I know I am. And I can't stop. <laughs> and I don't want to be like this, but it's just the way I am. <laughs> if only I cleaned my room more, then my mom would have loved me. Yeah, hey, that's hey, what I want. It's all right. It's all right, okay? Come on. We're going to go get some French fries. Everybody, just put yourself on the ride. <laughs> we'll we're be gonna, right back. We're going to be back. <laughs> <laughs> they even make morning people want to reach for the snooze button. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. I don't know if you know this. At least this is something I've been told. Not that myself I've experienced it, but I've heard that drugs can be a really quick way to make money. Like if, you know, it's one of those things where you can buy low and sell high kind of a thing. And then when people start getting high, you can really start selling high. Um, And so I appreciate this guy um, whose name is not being released because he's under 18. Um, But I appreciate where he's coming from because what he was trying to do was he was trying to turn a profit. Um, And so he decided to go to a party and sell ecstasy. Um, but here's the thing, and this can be a problem when in the drug trade, you know, because these sorts of drugs are illegal, they can be difficult to come by. And since he didn't have any, he just went ahead and started selling something oh, in as place of ecstasy, it. <laughs> which again goes to show you one of the biggest problems with the illicit drug trade, because there's no regulation. There's no guarantee that what you're getting is the drug that they tell you yep. that you're getting. And so while at this party, he began selling this drug And then after a while, the bathrooms began becoming very, very busy. He... (laughs) Was he selling? He was selling laxatives (laughs) as ecstasy. (laughs) 
It's like, hey, dude, are you feeling it? I'm feeling <laughs> something. I got to go to the bathroom, dude. So That's it's all awesome. Right. That's so awesome. It is. And so the police got called, and he managed to sell 94 of these well, brown colored tablets you know that people were getting really sick in order for the police to get called in <laughs> dude look at people die yeah exactly it's like well we thought we were buying something illegal it turns out we were buying something perfectly legal but dang bro that's not cool man well, that's harsh man that is not cool i mean quite <laughs> frankly getting cleaned out is probably well let's face it it to, you know, considering all the different things that could be in a random pill you buy at a party that you don't know what it is, though, <laughs> did you imagine how scared you would be? You've always heard, like, <laughs> you've, like you've heard, like, dude, man, you don't know what's in those pills. They could mess you up. Oh, whatever, dude. That's cool. Like, it's not going to matter. And then you take it and you're like, oh, no. It's happening. Something's wrong, dude. Something's wrong with me. Listen to my stomach. Oh, no. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. I got to go to... Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Especially you got to get me to a hospital, Especially bro. since in the beginning, a lot of people will be playing it off like, no, I feel it. Uh, do you feel it? I feel it. This is awesome. This is great. And it's nothing like it. It's this party. Everybody's dancing and jumping and having a good time. Yeah. And then it hits you. I freaking love it, dude. I love it. That would be a great way for cops to break up parties, too. Be like, no, let's just pass this stuff out. Here's what's amazing, though. Like, the guy that was selling the laxatives as ecstasy, he's still getting busted on a drug supply offense because he yeah, was still... Yeah, I, I don't think you're still supposed to be selling. It's because you're selling yeah. the items. Yeah, exactly. I say, you know what? I This is perfect. We should set this guy loose. Go to more parties, sell fake ecstasy. Oh, bro! Dude, I think I got some of the bad... I got bad stuff, man! And then you charge for the bathroom. <laughs> yeah! Dude, it's like, sorry, man, five bucks for a bathroom pass. Oh, it just went up to ten. <laughs> and we're at twenty now. Bodies in full force. I love it. That's what, yes, Nikki, let's do this. <laughs> let's do it. This was the worst of the riots, and we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. <laughs> the riot exists because Radio U exists, and Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at radiou.com slash donate.